Hi folks, this is Vincent Adderley with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Enigma Beyond Code. This game supports 1 to 5 players, it's for ages 14 and up, and the average playtime is roughly 5 to 60 minutes. The reason for that is that one game typically plays 5 to 10 minutes, but you can play a series of games that will last you about an hour, sh should you want to. What is the Enigma Code? Uh, well, Enigma Beyond Code is a game where you are a hidden role, you've got a hidden character. You're going to go into this mansion and you're going to be trying to collect specific tokens and find specific rooms in order to satisfy your hidden character's objective. If you can do that before the time limit expires, then you win. Pretty simple, right? Kind of, sort of. There's some bluffing involved and the like. And each room does something a little different. Alright, so as far as the components are concerned, I'll show you the box real quick. Um, these are the player mats that we're not using. These are just an outline of all the different rooms. There's nine rooms in the game. Uh, they're going to be the same nine rooms for every single game that you play. So it's not like you've got 15 rooms and you're only going to see nine of them. No, it's, it's just nine rooms and you're going to see all nine rooms. But they are going to be randomized at the start of every game. And all of what they do is listed here. Now, I could read them all off to you, but I'm not going to do that. We'll just discover them as we go. Um... On the right-hand side are all the different rules that a character could be. The decryptor, for example, needs a decryption token and needs to reveal the command room and enigma code room in order to win the game. Whereas the Dark Messiah needs a chaos token. Um, and then the mansion cards they need to find are the radio center and enigma code car, uh, rooms here. So, again, every role is going to do something different. Even the saboteur... Um, this it does not win by finding stuff. Um, if the tracker here goes to zero uh, and time is up, they win. Assuming they're not silenced, which I'll get to in a little bit. There's even a ghost. You can't win as the ghost, but you do something special, you put her back, and then you take a different character. Okay? Long story short, different rooms, different characters. Next up, um, these are the tokens that we're not using in the game, and these are the character rules that we're not using. Um, the game can be set up a number of different ways, depending on the number of players and depending on whether or not you want an easy experience or a beginner experience. In the beginner experience, you take out the medium, the archivist, and the ghost, and um, you, in a two-player game, you, you stick with six specific cards. Um, there's some blank cards you do want to make your own, which is kind of cool. Um, so there's that. There's also these trackers. Um, players will be able to write down um, notes based on what they think people are, you know, based on what people are calling out as they peek at different rooms um, and what you see whenever you see a room. So you can write your notes down here. Each character or each player gets one of those. Um, there are some, uh, there's a solo work card for solo play and then there's two blank rooms again, that you can use um, as you wish. The game even comes with uh, sleeves. That is so cool. I've never seen a game come with card sleeves before. That's just, it's very considerate. I, I've i never seen that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very impressed. And, and not to mention baggies, extra baggies, more than we needed. So I'm, I'm very happy with the components and what came in the box, just long story short. All right, now as far as what's on the table, You've got two rule books. Um, you've got the game rules, which outlines everything. The back is really all you need. And then this theme guide goes over every single room in detail and every single character in detail. It also goes over the solo rules, I believe. Uh, that might be in the other rule book. And it goes over uh, a detailed example of a game, should you want to uh, look at that. And some extra notes back here. Okay, You can make photocopies of that, what have you. Alright, um, so that's the rule book. Um, the tokens, should time expire, you're going to go ahead and put this out with the one. If it expires again, you flip it over to the two, and everyone collectively loses. If, if, if time expires twice while you're playing in the game. Assuming you're playing like a long campaign of several games. This is a chaos token. Again, some, some characters will need this. You can turn this in uh, to prevent the... Uh, Enigma machine from taking effect. Other players can stop another player from t using the Enigma machine effect by discarding a chaos token. This is a decryptor token. Uh, players can discard this one in order to take like an extra turn on their turn. But they, uh, there's two conditions. One is they have to have had this prior to the start of their turn. 
And on top of that, um, whenever they take their turn, they have to point to a face-down card. They can't take the effect of a card that's already face-up. I'll explain all of that in a minute. Um, this is to track how many victory points someone has, how many games they've won, in case you're playing a number of games. The silence token, um, this is given to players that are caught in a lie or accuse someone of lying when they, when they really didn't. Um, the silence person uh, basically sort of skips their next turn, um, among other things, and I'll, I'll get to more detail on that. Um, a typical round is, or a typical turn plays out like this. The active player will uh, do one of two things. They can either try to win, like in Clue, they're, you're going you're gonna to just go for broke, and if you get everything, great. If you don't, you're eliminated from the game. Um, or you can take your regular turn. Your regular turn is you point to a card. If it's face up, you just do the effect of that card. If it's face down, you peek at it, and then you call out what it is, but you don't have to actually be truthful about it. So for example, if this is the library, I could, I could peek at it and go, it's the library. I'm telling myself it's the library, but I can announce to everyone else that it's the radio center. And if no one challenges me on that, then I get to take the action of the radio center and not the library. Uh, this card still remains face down. Now, some cards will be turned face up as the result of some of these different room actions. So some cards may be face up, some will be face down. But on a turn, you're going to point to a card. If it's face down, you're going to announce what it is, even if you're lying. And if, you're, if no one calls you on it, you take that action, whatever, whatever the falsehood was. Um, if someone tries to catch you in that lie going, I don't believe you, um, you better show me that card and prove that you're telling the truth. Only the people that are involved with that conflict will see that card. The person that is um, caught in the lie, like let's say that I, I lied about the card and Ida Lee called me on it, I would get the silence token. If I was telling the truth and Ida Lee said, no, you're lying, then she gets the silence token instead. The person that is silenced um, when it's someone else's turn, they cannot make an accusation or like try and call them out on a lie. And on their next turn, um, they can only peek at a card, but they won't be able to say anything. They, they can't take an action. They can't do anything. They look at a card and that's it. They end their turn and they put this silence token back and then play their, their next turn is normal. So you don't want a silence token. That will limit what you can do uh, for the next turn. All right. And it's worth mentioning that each player can only have one of each token type. It's going to be either a chaos token, decryptor token, or a silence token. And these victory point things, that's just for end game and end of game stuff. It's mainly going to be these tokens here. Okay? That's the general gist of it. Um, yeah, so I think we are ready to go. Um, this, again, this is our first time playing, so we're not going to, you know, have any strategies. But um, in a two-player game, uh, in the basic game, you're going to take six character cards. You're going to deal three to each player in a two-player game, and you're going to choose one and put the other two back. So there's four cards in this discard pile, the ones that we did not choose. I have a secret character, which is this one here, and this is what I need in order to um, win the game. Okay, and I'll just zoom in on that. I do not know what she is. She does not know who I am. She could guess based on what I'm trying to do or what tokens I'm trying to get, but who knows. Um, I have the round tracker, meaning I go first. Okay, and every time it is this person's turn, you advance this by one. So we're going to start by doing that now. And again, I did not go over what all the rooms did. So um, you'll find that out as we go. So it is my turn. I'm going to go ahead and point to something and peek at it. I'll just take this middle one. All right. So do I want to tell the truth or do I want to lie about what this is? Um, okay, so I will say that um, it is the radio center. Ah. The radio center, the effect of that is um, reveal another face down mansion card. Anytime it says reveal, that means I flip it face up. Mm. So if, if, you, if you think I'm telling the truth, I get to reveal any other card and turn it face up. I don't get to take its action, but I just get to reveal it. Yes, you're telling the truth. Okay. So I will just flip this one just to see what it is. Oh, the Enigma Code. All right. <laughs> so now we know where the Enigma Code is. Okay. Okay. Now it is your turn. Okay. So I pick one. Mm-hmm. Now the Enigma Code's room oh, that's says you 
If you do not have a Chaos token, uh, do nothing. If you do have a Chaos token, peek at another face-down mansion card for free. Okay. That's what that does. No one has a Chaos token, so pointing to it as you would do nothing. Alright. Well, what about notes? Like, when do we start doing this? Um, it's up notes. to you, whenever you want to do it. I gave you oh, a pen. Really? Yeah, so what I may want to do is, I, I know what this is, <laughs> um, whether or not you think, you know, you said I was telling the truth. Yeah. But, was I? I can see this getting very convoluted quickly. <laughs> now it's possible that this card might be turned face down later. Yeah. So and I'm, shuffles. And shuffle. Yeah. Some 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 rooms will shuffle cards. Yeah. So I'm going to just put that down for right now right. as verification. I'm gonna pick this. Okay. Now you're gonna look at it and you're going to tell me what you want. Well, you can lie or tell the truth. You tell me. Do all of them have icons on the bottom? Um, yeah, most of them should. What that that well, that's that's a, a quick iconography of what that thing does. Rather than look at this, you can look at the iconography. Oh, but if you're not familiar with the iconography, then just look on the player mat. I it's see. the player mat will make it easier for you until you get used to the iconography. Okay. I'm going to say it's the library. The library. The library is this. Peek at another face-down mansion card. Depending on the icon in the upper, le uh, upper right corner, take either a decryption or a chaos token. Um, what that means is um, at the upper right of every card, there's either going to be a chaos token or a chaos symbol or a decryption symbol. She's going to now peek, I believe you. Okay. And what card was that? What card did you, which one did you say it was? That one? So I'm going to put down A for Ida Lee, and then you said it was the library. Yeah. Now if I find out that you're lying... <laughs> you're going to kick me out. You're out. You're permanently banned. Um, so I, I'm going to put question mark next to library, because I don't know if she's telling the truth or not. Okay. But now you get to pick another card that's face down, okay. peek at it, and then you take a token based off of what you see. Okay. You don't tell me what it is, you just peek at it. Okay. Okay, I'm peek at this one. So in the upper right hand corner, it'll tell you which token it is. Okay, it's a chaos. Ah, interesting. So it's gonna be one of four rooms. It's either the Enigma code, it's either the radio, it's going to be either the radio center, Enigma code, the teamwork card, or the tome of order and chaos. Those are the only four rooms that have a chaos token on it. I do know that the Enigma code is here, and I did tell you that the radio room was here. Whether or not it's true or not, I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> so I'm going to make a note real quick as to what I think this is. Um, so I'm going to put down here or. Okay, so it's going to be one of those. And that is what I need for my characters. So, again, i got to take that into consideration. Am I, am I interested in this card? Am I not interested in this card? Um, is this really the library? Who knows? Um, okay, so it's my turn. I'm going to advance time by one. And I am going to peek at this one to see what it is. Okay. Um, let's see what that does. Okay. Um, okay, so this is what that does. Alright, do I want to do something else? Okay, I'm going to say that this is the command room. The command room effect is, um, if I do not have a chaos token, I get to peek at another face down card. I do not have a chaos token, so if you do not challenge me, I will peek at something else. I'm going to challenge you. You're going to challenge me? Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to flip this face up. Okay. 
It is the command room. <laughs> I was telling the truth. <laughs> you get a silence token. <laughs> ah! uh <-huh>. okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Aren't you happy? <laughs> I'm not happy. You know? yeah. I'm not happy That's at all. Funny. Okay, so I still get to take that action. Yeah. So, uh, for the command, I get to peek at another card. Um, which cards do I not know yet? Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this one and see what it is. All right, so based on what I'm seeing here, that... All right, so... <laughs> and that goes away. So this has to be that based on process of elimination so that's what we've got so far um okay and it is now your turn now with the silence token you can only peek at a face down card yeah. and that's it no action no nothing all right i got this i'm gonna peek at this one okay your silence token goes away Mm -hmm. All right, so I need to look and see what I need. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm going to have to... Hmm. It has to be, okay. So, all right. I'm going to peek at this one. Mm -hmm. And would you know she was telling the truth? <laughs> all right, so I will confirm that. I'm gonna say that's the library for obvious reasons. Because yes. you've already said it's the library and I believed you. Um, I'm going to say it's the library, mm -hmm. and now I get to peek down, uh, peek at a face down card, and whatever it is, I get a token. So these go away at the end of the turn? Like at the end of every turn? What? The, the whisper? The silence? Yeah, ones? yeah. At the end of your turn, it goes away. I thought it, on the rule book it said that um, you pass it to, or something. It said something else, I thought. I mean, whenever you take that token, you immediately pass your turn to the next player. Oh, that's Meaning you don't right. get to do anything okay. else. Yeah, I misread. Never mind. That's fine. All right, so you get to. I get to look at some. Well, no, I, I look, get to peek. Look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you know? She's telling well, the truth. Well, what do you know? <laughs> All right, well, I don't want to do that one. I'm looking for a specific card based on. Um, okay, so we know that this is that. No, no, that's that. Uh, that is. I'm looking for something specific. That one is that. This, uh, these two boxes that will fill in um, that tells me which ones are, which which symbols are in the upper right hand corner. And it will help me try and figure out what I need here. Um, okay, so I'm thinking that no, because that one has that. Um, I guess it has to be... I'll just do, say, this one. I'll peek at it. Okay. So I get this symbol in the upper right-hand corner, and I'm going to write down what that is. Uh, and check to show that I know. And I get the proper token. Mm -hmm. All right, now before my turn ends, I have the option to try and win the game. Oh my god, that was fast. <laughs> Again, games typically take five, ten minutes to do. So you're the decryptor? Yes. <laughs> I have the Enigma code, I know where it is. Very good. I know where the command room is, and I have a decryption token. Nice. I was trying to find the stupid Enigma machine to shovel it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got lucky with those. and So you, know. you were telling the truth. Do you lie at all? I did not lie once. Good job. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm.
So you can kind of, so just by telling the truth, you can still like pretty easily win. Eh, it depends on what you need. I mean, mm -hmm. let's say you're the decryptor and you need a decryptor token. Well, the library really is the only place to do that. It's, I'm looking at this here. There's yeah. plenty of ways to get chaos tokens. The Turing bo bomb, too. Oh, yeah, the Turing bomb. You don't have a chaos token. It, yeah, I, I could have said, I could have looked for the Turing bomb as well or lied about it yeah. to get a decryption token. I could have done that. You see? But yeah, just to show it where everything was, Enigma Machine was the last thing I, I looked at. Okay. Um, Which ones did you figure out? It was these two. Because um, based on the token that you took, Yeah. the radio center was here and I knew that. Yeah. It had that and I knew that. There were only two of those chaos left. So mm -hmm. I had teamwork and tome written here uh, as I a see. question mark. Yeah. When I discovered the tome was oh, over here, oh, nice. I knew this was teamwork. Nice. I was looking for that one because I was the saboteur. Ah. <laughs> I was trying to. Now, you said to advance time. Now, it has to advance twice in order for the game to be over. N like to flip. What? Uh, no, what this means is let's say you're playing five games, best of ten games, whatever. Oh, okay. If, 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 you're, if on your fifth game, this happens to you lose twice to time expiring. Then like the world is blown up and devoured and okay. so Cthulhu the, or whatever takes so, over the world. So for the saboteur, as long as that hourglass goes to the end, then that means he wins. Yes. You I had think. the saboteur? Yeah. Okay. So as the saboteur, you were trying to prevent me. F you were trying to figure out who I was and get time to advance via... Um, yeah. Now the Enigma machine would have actually turned back time. As part of it, it, one of its uh, one of its uh, things. Rough. <laughs> um, first, time retreats one slot backward. Then, the Enigma machine and two other cards of your choice are shuffled together and put face down. Yeah, that's true. So I would have actually gained more time to complete, but I would have lost track of those two cards. Yeah, there would have that been that one advances time forward. This one advances. So you wanted this card, and mm -hmm. you wanted. So you may have wanted to lie about this regularly. Yeah. Even if it meant knowing that you were lying. Yeah, but I couldn't have a silence token either. At the right. end of the game, yes. When it's the last round, mm -hmm. if the saboteur has a silence token, you you still do not win. Yeah, yeah. So I'd have to kind of like be all sneaky about it. Mm -hmm. Pretend like a... I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's weird. You are the traitor, basically, yeah. of the midst. <laughs> I was the traitor in Among Us. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, yeah, so we didn't get to all of the different rooms, but that's the general gist of it. Um, this... I saw that one. I peeked at that one. You liked that one? Did you... Did I didn't you see like it? it. I just, I peeked at it and I'm like, okay, I'll write this down. The, <laughs> uh, Sherbius Phantom. This one is, you take or discard a token, a chaos token. Meaning if you have a chaos token already, you get rid of it. If you don't have one, you get one. Yeah. And then uh, you may exchange characters with any other player. However, <laughs> in a two-player game, in a two-player game, mm -hmm. instead you take one from the discard pile, mm -hmm. and then you put the one that you did have face up for all to see. Then you take the new one. Yeah. Now, is it a blind take, or do you choose it? I believe it's. A, I believe it's just a blind a from blind the top. Take. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean. Well, that makes sense. They're shuffled anyway, so you don't know which card is which. Yeah, no, I was saying, like, could you look at them? Oh, look choose? at them. No, I think it's a course, blind pick. Yeah, okay. Pretty yeah. sure. Again, yeah, first time sense. playing. That makes sense. So what did you think of this? Did I you... like it. I think it needs more cards. Well, there is more cards. Um, oh. Again, we only played with six of the characters for our first run. The I meet... meant, like, more rooms. Oh, more rooms? Yeah. yeah there's only, um, there's the Nine. two that you can create. That's wow. it, though. Like, again, there's there's two blank cards in here that you can create. Oh, cool. Um, okay. But no... Yeah, I agree with you. Having more cards would have been cool, whether or not that would break the balance. Um, these are some of the characters that we didn't pick uh, for our game. Uh, again, in a two-player game on the basic mode, you're going to have two decryptors. You're going to have... And here's the other decryptor. One's male, one's female. It doesn't matter. They both do the same thing. You have a wanderer. Uh, reveal the tome of order and the chaos. Uh, tome of order and chaos. The library and the teamwork cards. So you need three, three cards, no token. And then you've got the saboteur, which we've already seen. Uh, so as long as this expires, and then the dark messiah, uh, having chaos token, reveal radio center and enigma code. 
So basically the same as, um, almost the same as these guys, but slightly different. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your blank ones, which you can uh, fill in as you want to, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's the male Dark Messiah. Again, the male and female, there's no difference between them. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the other characters that we didn't see, there's the medium, uh, there's the archivist, and the ghost. And again, the ghost can't win, but it's a temporary thing. You become the ghost temporarily, you do what she says, and then you pick someone else. Cool. Yeah. So what were you saying? Did you, you like this game? I did. I liked it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I just wish there was more meat to it. Mm -hmm. Like, it seems like, like a very thin top layer. Of a good this is meant game. to be yeah it's like a filler game <laughs> yeah if it had more um more cards i think and even more characters this would be like unbelievably awesome like clue <laughs> like a, instead of like it have a three by four grid as, as opposed to three by three grid it needs to be like a 12 by 12 <laughs> but see here's the thing the game is meant to be played in short spurts it is, so yeah. for what it advertises it does it mm -hmm. it's great does it does it need a, a more complicated version? Maybe. But I'm happy with it as it is, mm -hmm. as a short and simple game that you can pull out five minutes here, ten minutes there, yeah. or play several games for a long haul. It works. I think it works. Um, I think um, we could probably play more of it. Yeah. And have more fun, like, the more we play. Yeah, okay. I agree. Once you get to know what the cards do, you can form strategies on, okay, well, she knows where teamwork yeah. is, so I, I know I can do this, this, and this, and this, and I want to do this, this, and this. So I think once you know what the cards do and how to chain them, yeah. or, I, or how to lie, bluffing becomes better and mm -hmm. more important as you learn what the cards do and how they interact with each other. Yeah. I um I don't even like bluffing games. Like, I really don't. Isn't Love Letter a bluffing game? Oh, yeah, because yeah. there's hidden rules in that, too. Yeah, it's okay. Um, But this one, I really enjoyed this one. It plays very much kind of like a Clue, like in a Clue manner. Mm -hmm. I love Clue. Oh, my God. Where you need to get three specific, or find three specific things and eliminate the others. Yeah. And this one, I love that they have, like, a little notepad here where you can make notes and... It's just, it's adorable, and a lot of thought went into this, and I, I thought it was fantastic. There's a, there's a lot here. I mean, I, I know it's a light game. Very light. But there's a lot here for such a small box. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it could be, there could be more to it. I, yeah, like I said, it could have more complicated. The, to be fair, there is a game variant in the back that we did not touch on. Mm -hmm. The ability to add more characters to the game as time progresses. Oh, that's So cool. you're going to start with a set number of characters, and then you add more to the game as you play so there's a couple of pages devoted to that and then there's the solo rules in the back should you want to mess with that as well mm -hmm. um i would love to see how the solo plays i, th I think that would be so interesting mm -hmm. uh, overall i'm happy with it i the quality is fantastic yes um the the quality is really good and again the whole sleeves in the box that's <laughs> i don't see that very often that's kudos that's uh, really thoughtful like a uh, production quality was really well done yeah, Real the hot. cards are beautiful. The art is beautiful. The tokens yeah. are actually quite nice. Um, I wish they were kind of labeled, but I guess. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they need to be labeled. Really, I get there's confused. only there's only two. The chaos. <laughs> think of Lord Sauron with the eye. What's a Lord Sauron? I don't know what that is. Get out. What is that? Lord of the Rings. Oh my god! You know that eyeball sit on top of the tower. I see you. I only mm -hmm. ever found that out when I watched the movie recently. I, with you. But you still didn't know who Lord Sauron was. I know. <laughs> That's why it needs to be a label. <laughs> <laughs> a label, Lord Sauron. Not a chaos token, Lord Sauron. Yeah. Uh, and then the decryptor token. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not enough tokens types to really need descriptors, to yeah. be honest. I like labels, though. I know. You're being picky, though. I am. I am being a little picky. Only because this It's is your opinion. I know. But... It, it's, a, it's a good game. I gotta find something to nitpick, you know? <laughs> You're nitpicking, but yeah. I liked it. It didn't come with pencils. You can nitpick about that. Not that it really, not that it really yeah, matters. Yeah, that's true. But still, like, I love the whole notebook. Oh, yeah. This is cool. I mean, this Beautiful is... They didn't have to do this, but it was fun nonetheless. And it smells good. She she has a weird fixation with smelling components right out of the box. I don't get it. New board game smell. All right. So, yeah, I thought this was a fantastic game, honestly. Agreed. Mm -hmm. This is a great filler. Again, you can play it over longer play sessions, but uh, for a short and simple game, you know, I, I really like it. So, kudos. Yeah, Good job. Really, really great job. 
Enigma Beyond Code. If you guys haven't already subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube, that way you can stay up to date with any new content I have to publish. This is Vincent Natalie. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, guys.